Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. I'll be hosting today's show. Up first here on the uh, hazardous weather graphic, can, there we go, a little delay in the map advancer there. We've got uh, the uh, Alaska range, the wind advisory that's out uh, today ends at 6 p.m., and uh, ends at 6 p.m. today, Thursday. But this is for a high wind watch that's out for the Alaska range. Uh, that doesn't kick into effect until Saturday afternoon and will continue Saturday night and Sunday. So a lot of uh, lead time here on that warning uh, for the mountains there. And expecting uh, again Saturday afternoon and night winds to increase with that big storm coming into the uh, Aleutians today is going to gradually uh, shift eastward late Saturday and Sunday and that you can see winds uh, the outlook is a possibility of winds gusting over 60 miles an hour through the passes of the Alaska range otherwise uh, pretty good everywhere else no watches warnings advisories out uh, at least uh, public advisories uh, quite a few Marines out west so and moving on to satellite imagery low pressure here uh, Coming right across uh, South Central Alaska, surface a little roughly somewhere around the Susitna Valley today, and uh, brought precipitation, nothing too heavy, but uh, about a third of an inch falling areas of the uh, North Gulf Coast here. And that cloud band really uh, not bringing a lot of uh, precipitation, at least during the day today, to the southern southeast coast. Uh, about uh, 10 to 15 hundreds falling in a 12-hour period, ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon at Sitka. Kloak picked up about a tenth of an inch. Otherwise, uh, rainfall not as impressive, at least today, as what the satellite would indicate here with that flow coming up from the south and southwest. And then it kind of actually increases here. Roughly about a third of an inch fell at Gustuvos. Gustuvos. I used to be able to pronounce that, but uh, the city, it begins with a G there. Gustavos or something like that. Anyway, and Yakutat had about 35 hundredths of an inch in the uh, convection falling in behind more of a showery type of condition there. And also areas like Valdez had half an inch of precipitation today. Seward about eight tenths of an inch and Cordova 0.35 inches. Up in the Copper River Basin areas of snow falling today but nothing too heavy, no more than a couple of inches. And even lighter amounts up here uh, north of the Alaska Range. I didn't see any uh, significant precipitation amounts uh, today up in the northern interior areas. A little bit more here in the wraparound moisture, but again, just anywhere from 500s to maybe 1500s or two tenths of an inch water equivalent at most back up here. Although four tenths of an inch did fall at uh, Akiok, southwest Kodiak Island, kind of a, a new circulation forming there right over the island, pulling off and precipitations ended on like at Kodiak State Airport there. And winds starting to pick up a little bit, anywhere from 25 gusts as high as 40 miles an hour in the windier areas here. Uh, from the northwest there as that uh, new system pulls off to the east and kind of gusty northerly winds all the way back or northwest winds turn northerly here up across the uh, Yukon Delta Coast, St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait. A little chillier air coming down on those northerly winds. Uh, winds gusting to 37 miles an hour at Nome today with the uh, or this afternoon with the temperature about 30 degrees. Uh, so definitely chillier air coming down out of the north here and also some uh, ridging beginning to take place, so those winds dying off here over the uh, Pribilofs and the Fox Islands ahead of the big storm here coming up into the Aleutians. We've got winds gusting 40, 50 miles an hour and increasing here at mid-afternoon mid today for the central Aleutians with a pretty good shot of rain with that front coming up or the moisture coming up ahead of the uh, low pressure area there. And front right about in this position here, the low center just off, just getting onto the chart there. Otherwise, you can see a ridging here in between the system over South Central Alaska and that one, giving a little bit of a break here with some clearing, diminishing showers, and diminishing winds. 
And uh, here's this uh, little bit tighter gradient there, kicking the winds up as a trough exits Kodiak Island today. And this front breaking up over the interior areas. And also see some uh, breaks occurring, Copper River Basin, mostly on the lee side of the terrain there, up over the central interior. And uh, the northwest, uh, looks like Kobuk, Selowick Valley is pretty good today, down in toward uh, Buckland, northwest coast. Areas of light snow showers, flurries here, upper Yukon Valley, Brooks Range North Slope. But again, as I mentioned, nothing very significant. And then behind that, uh, just uh, cold high pressure here, cold air coming down, Arctic high up over the Russian Far East there. And that uh, is going to uh, actually, this system here will begin to uh, slowly move northeastward. But uh, otherwise, in the panhandle today, we've got this uh, frontal boundary right through here. Again, not really much of a rain producer. And we'll see tonight, uh, that kicks off to the east there with a new low forming and deepening to 998 millibars. And uh, the westerly flow here, it's going to uh, keep the uh, panel kind of uh, damp and unsettled. Areas of rain continuing, showers to the north, another trough here to the west forming, and that'll be moving in uh, late tonight and into uh, tomorrow. Otherwise, look for one to two inches of snow to fall here, anywhere from the Alaska range, maybe in the north of the Sitna Valley, you can see some wet snow tonight. Now extend northward across the uh, eastern interior, all the way up uh, to the eastern Brooks Range. Scatter out the snow showers or flurries on the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast. Uh, break here through the interior and then a break resulting in some pretty good clearing. Kodiak Island with the northwest winds, it'll be coming down later tonight and tomorrow. And uh, as this ridge pushes eastward there, cold upper trough here brings a chance of snow back into the uh, Seward Peninsula and uh, Bering Strait as well as the northwest coast. Western Arctic coast, uh, light snow. And winds are coming down, especially with the Seward Peninsula here with uh, everything kind of moving east to west and from southwest to northeast here. So those winds, as the high kind of weakens, gets pinched off. You can see a big storm just south of the central Aleutians. Moderate to heavy rain, gale and storm force winds ahead of this front. And definitely even stronger winds coming back in around the uh, northwest quadrant here. Storm force north to northeast winds into the western Aleutians with uh, rain continuing there. Kind of a mixture of moisture up over the northern Bering Sea. And then uh, that changes to some snow showers or St. Lawrence Island as the winds become quite light. Taking a look at uh, for tomorrow's forecast. <laughs> okay, the system pushes northeastward here. We've got what we call a triple point uh, feature with the front, the cold front, the warm front, and the occluded front meet. That moves to very close to the Pribilof Islands. Strong southerly winds and moderate heavy amounts of rain into the eastern Aleutians. Uh, pretty good uh, setup for a strong wind event for, say, Cold Bay. Uh, could you pretty, probably see the highest gusts of wind there tomorrow with this uh, orientation of the gradient. But it even gets tighter here on the north side of the warm front and the occluded front back into the western Aleutian. So looking at those storm force northerlies into those areas, but uh, much lighter, less gradient here behind the front. So winds will be actually on the light side for the central Aleutians tomorrow with just uh, uh, cloudy skies, areas of showers or light rain drizzle and that sort of uh, pattern. Warm front increasing rain along the southwest coast, uh, probably during it throughout the afternoon. Uh, slowly, this whole system is really not moving all that fast as it uh, deepens and kind of drifts northward. And that's going to set up a southerly flow and going to kind of get a uh, persistent area of moderate to heavy rain. They'll be slowly shifting eastward over the next couple of days. But tomorrow, uh, Kodiak Island, increasing clouds, especially in the afternoon. Otherwise, light winds and a nice day. Uh, really nice conditions here over the central interior, south central Alaska, Prince William Sound. And snow shower is on the decrease over the eastern interior areas. And then cold upper trough uh, brings uh, kind of breezy conditions. Not too bad on the winds up there, but uh, occasional light snow or periods of light snow, maybe even continuous light slow. Light snow for the western Arctic coast down into areas of the Bering Strait. And this trough weakening Keeps it unsettled and kind of showery there for the southeast coast uh, through tomorrow. But uh, that changes on Friday night and Saturday with this system out here to the west slowly moving northeastward and maintaining its intensity. Nothing but high pressure builds over the eastern northeast Pacific or eastern Gulf into the Panhandle and up into the uh, eastern interior areas. And so pretty dry conditions. I'm not too sure how if these showers will form at all. Maybe just a few clouds there. But uh, back to the west here you can see the uh, Strong, tight gradient, heavy rain, Kodiak Island, right up into Bristol Bay, the Alaska Range, 
Western Alaska range, uh, look for pretty gusty winds in the afternoon, maybe as high as 60, 70 miles an hour. And again, really a lot of moisture coming up from the due south, so moderate to heavy rain. Heaviest here will be along the Aleutian Range on the upslope areas, Kodiak Island, shifting eastward from the Alaska Peninsula, but still pretty moderate up here north of the frontal boundary, back in towards St. Lawrence Island. And then the low center, kind of a new one forming here, just west of the Perbolov, so this whole mess moving very slowly. Taking a look at lows for tonight, uh, single numbers back to the northwest there, otherwise 10 to 15. Uh, Northern Interior, Brooks Range, Arctic Coast, coldest on the east side there, 20s back to the west, and lows in the upper 20s are the southwest coast, St. Lawrence Island. And the Aleutians, uh, much milder, lows in the mid-40s, central Aleutians with a uh, storm coming in, lower 40s for the Fox Islands, and uh, upper tw or mid-20s, King Salmon, 32 there at Point Hope, or I'm sorry, Pilot Point, not Point Hope, mid-30s for Kodiak Island, 37 Alaska, 30s lower 40s for the southeast coast, highs tomorrow in the uh, 40s for the Panhandle and lower to mid 40s here, South Central Alaska with the mid to upper 40 range in Prince William Sound. Otherwise, either side of freezing through the central interior, eastern interior areas, all the way out to the Seward Peninsula. Teens, Kobuk Valley, Brooks Range, North Slope, lower 20s, eastern Arctic coast, a little milder to a little above freezing on the west side there, highs near 50 for the Aleutians, lower 50s on Alaska and Cold Bay. Lows the following morning, mid to upper 40s, very mild with the uh, strong winds and precipitation. Central Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, maybe a shade below zero up over the northeast interior. Otherwise, 5 to 15 for the lows. And, of course, milder back to the southwest. Lows in the uh, mid to upper 30s for the panhandle, followed by highs, 40s to maybe lower 50s. And lower to mid 40s here, south central Alaska, 20s, teens, and then back up the lower 20s up along the Arctic coast and mid 40s for the Bering Sea. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic here for Friday morning. IFR, uh, central Aleutians up into the southern Bering Sea, south central Bering Sea, and uh, almost up to the Perbloffs there. And marginal VFR here into the southwest coast with some VFR breaking out over the Alaska Peninsula. And then just uh, areas of marginal and IFR here, central interior, on down to the north Gulf Coast, up to the southern slopes of the Berks Range. And then some areas of uh, VFR thrown into the west, northwest, and north slope. And basically marginal VFR for the panhandle with IFR over toward the border. And for the afternoon, mostly marginal VFR from Dixon Entrance right on up Link Canal Glacier Bay, North Gulf Coast. Hit some areas of uh, IFR here, upslope areas of the Coast Range, uh, the Alaska Range, but improving here over South Central Alaska. And actually uh, tending to improve also here in the afternoon over uh, toward the Eastern Copper River Basin as uh, moisture shifts eastward here. Uh, but it shouldn't reach the eastern areas uh, until tomorrow evening. Otherwise, uh, generally improving here over the western interior, developing high pressure, actually due to the big storm coming into the Bering Sea, so widespread area IFR associated with that for uh, tomorrow afternoon. And by Saturday morning, shifts east-northeastward here, right into the southwest interior, crossing the Alaska Range early on. Marshall VFR with some areas IFR, south-central Alaska. Mostly VFR here on the east side, and uh, marginal VFR for the Panhandle, VFR back to the west and northwest, and for Saturday afternoon. Lots of IFR here, uh, well from the uh, Norton Sound area, Nolato Hills, actually almost looks like Buckland there, right on down in toward Kodiak Island. Westward, central Bering Sea, Aleutians up to St. Lawrence Island. VFR though for the north slope, uh, about the Koyukuk, upper Yukon Valleys, not too bad down into the upper Tanana Valley, and uh, some I, uh, VFR breaking out here in the lee side of the mountain ranges over south central Alaska, Denali Park in that area, uh, or not Denali Park, along Denali Highway with uh, marginal VFR for the Panhandle. Passes Anatubic, uh, starting out IFR becoming VFR uh, during the day and into the afternoon. Adigan, not quite as good, the moisture shifting eastward, so lingering there, IFR becoming marginal looks like at best uh, for tomorrow afternoon. And Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR early on, then VFR for the latter part of the morning through the afternoon. Rainy same forecast, early conditions will be of the marginal variety becoming VFR later in the morning and through the afternoon. Windy, starts out IFR, becomes VFR, 
And for Isabel, it looks like IFR throughout the day. And for Mentasta, VFR uh, may be becoming marginal VFR, that moisture pushing eastward across, uh, off to your west there, may stay VFR until evening though. And for Tanita, marginal VFR to start, and then by mid-morning on, it'll be VFR. Portage, same thing. In fact, Portage could be uh, IFR the entire day. Marginal VFR in the uh, AM would be mostly on the uh, west side, otherwise the east entrance, I think will be VFR the entire day. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR becoming VFR. Freezing levels at the surface here from Norton Sound and hugging the coastline up into Northern Cook Inlet and then along the coastline cutting across Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, 2,000 feet just to the south there. And uh, southerly flow here pulling 6,000 feet uh, up into the East Central Aleutian areas. Icing looking like this, uh, big huge area of rime icing, some of it uh, considerably moderate. Maybe, well, I'll go with moderate here, I won't say extreme. Uh, Eastern Aleutians, this whole area shifting northeastward and northward throughout the day. And the jet stream showing why, big trough, deep trough here, northerly jet diving way down and grabbing up a lot of moisture, coming back up uh, 150 knots, kind of splitting right here, but that uh, pulling that moisture in the next storm right on up into the area there. And a good flow from the west-southwest, turning northwest 110 knots right off the southeast coast, 9,000 feet. 50 to 70 knot, or 3,000 feet, 9, yeah, 9,000 feet, 50, 70 knot winds across the Alaska Peninsula, lighter over the interior, 3,000 feet, uh, 35 to 65 knots here, eastern Aleutian areas with uh, increasing winds, again, in the afternoon coming up to 50 knots, 30 knots along the southwest coast, lighter to the north there, and over the interior areas, and taking a look at turbulence, big area of uh, considerable moderate chop here, along the southwest coast and the Alaska Peninsula Eastern Aleutians. Could be even some severe for smaller aircraft on the Alaska Peninsula and Fox Islands area. And uh, otherwise, uh, this area turbulence mostly in the early morning hours. Can you spot Venus? Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. You may note that other than the moon, the planet Venus is the brightest thing in the night sky. Whether you call it the morning star, the evening star, the first star you see at night, or a UFO, this planet is unmistakable. It is so incredibly bright but you probably haven't seen Venus in a while. That's because it has been behind the sun for several months and has been pretty much invisible. But Venus is rounding the sun and heading into the evening skies soon. And so we wanted to issue a challenge. Who can be the first person to see Venus? We'll give you tips and tricks on how to spot it first so you can claim the title of Venusian Observer number one. Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set up for Saturday, October 26th, a little before sunset. To spot Venus, you'll need impeccable timing, a clear view to the southwestern horizon, and no clouds. As the sun sets, the brighter stars will pop out. The first star you may see just above the horizon is no star at all. It is the beautiful and dazzling planet Venus. Well, that was easy. There, I spotted Venus on Saturday, October 26th, just after sunset. Challenge completed. Now hold on, Dean. It might not be quite that easy. This week, you'll have to look for Venus at just the right time of night. If you look too early, the sun will be up and the sky will be too bright. If you look too late, Venus will be below the trees. Ah, and our simulated sky is also giving us the absolute best viewing conditions. If there are any clouds near the horizon, they could block Venus, not to mention trees or buildings. So it is possible that you can start to see Venus on Saturday, but it will definitely get easier as the weeks go on. As we approach Venus, we can see that this planet is about 7,500 miles in diameter, just slightly smaller than Earth. It's often called our sister planet for this very reason. 
However, that is where the similarities end, because under a thick blanket of carbon dioxide lies a battered, sweltering surface that is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, is it getting hot out here? Also, the air pressure under all that atmosphere would be so intense that it would squish you flat. I don't feel so good. And finally, when it rains on Venus, oh no! it rains sulfuric acid. So that would leave any visitor to Venus like James over there a melted, squished, acidy pile of goop. Okay, I think we've been here long enough. Let's get back out into space, please. Those clouds that squished and rained acid on James back there are also what makes Venus so bright. That's right, Dean. All the planets reflect light from the sun. That's why we can see them at night. But Venus's atmosphere is the most reflective of any planet. Plus, Venus is relatively large and can come relatively close to the Earth. That combination makes Venus super bright. We're back on Earth again on Saturday, October 26th, just after sunset. There's Venus just barely above the southwestern horizon. Venus will get easier to see as the days and weeks go on. If we look again, day by day, here is the view on the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th. Venus didn't get much higher above the horizon, but our friend the Moon came around to help. A slim, waxing crescent moon will be just above Venus on the 29th, and this can help you in your search. And Mercury will be there too, but it will be tough to spot. <laughs> Bonus points if you can see it. So, accept our challenge and try to be the first person to spot Venus in the nighttime sky. Let us know when you see Venus and share some pictures with us at www.stargazersonline.org. You may even be able to find it at the beginning of the week. But if nothing else, look for the crescent moon near Venus on the 29th. It's all there when you keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at today's uh, or these coastal water forecast for the south coast of the Panhandle tomorrow. Pretty brisk out of the west, 30 knots, 15 foot seas. Winds diminish and become more west-northwesterly on up the coastline there, down to 20 knots with 13 foot seas. And north to northeast winds at about 10, pretty light for the northern and central inside waters. Clarence Strait, west 15, seas 6 feet. And then for Saturday, northwest winds for Clarence Strait at 10 knots, otherwise kind of a variable wind direction for the northern and central inside waters. Northwest 15, down quite a bit there on the south coast, seas still 10 feet, and seas coming down 9 to 10 feet with a light west wind on the north coast. Prince William Sound tomorrow, northwest winds uh, diminishing to 15 knots, and seas coming back down to 2 feet. Probably be some higher gusts uh, late tonight, early tomorrow maybe, here out of the uh, western bays. Otherwise, small craft advisories for the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast. West 25 tomorrow, seas 12 feet. Gale warnings for west winds 35 knots here for the western North Gulf Coast. Right on down to the Barren Islands and then uh, 30 knots out of the west for Kamishak Bay. Small craft advisory, westerlies 25, southern Cook Inlet, much lighter north of the Forelands, just west at 10. And then for Cook Inlet on Saturday, northeast winds at about 15 to 20 knots. Full gales, Kamishak Bay, east 40, seas 10 feet, minimum gales for the Barren Islands with 12 foot seas, small craft advisories, western North Gulf Coast, southeast 25, southeast at 20 there for the east side, and Prince Liam Sound, east winds at 15 with 3 foot seas. And for Kodiak Island, uh, small craft advisories, west winds 25 knots uh, tomorrow, all, all diminishing throughout the day here, west 20, Shelikoff Strait. And then gales coming into the Alaska Peninsula here, southeast, 35 to 40 knots. Seas building at 17 feet on the Pacific side. Small craft advisory, southeast winds increasing to 25 with 5 foot seas for uh, Bristol Bay. <clears throat> and then for Saturday, 40 knots out of the southeast here on the east side of Kodiak Island. And from Sitkanak to Castle Cape, southeast, 45 knots, 25 foot seas. And then 40 knot winds all the way down to Cape Sarachev on the Pacific side. Seas are going to be 
26 feet on the Bering Sea side. We've got 45 knot southeast winds from Cape Sarachev right on up across Bristol Bay. Uh, very windy conditions for Saturday. Seas 11 to 12 feet. And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, uh, southeast 45 knots about covers it, edging up toward 50 knots for Unimac Island with seas anywhere from 15 to 20 feet on the Bering Sea side of the islands to as high as the lower 30s feet for the uh, Pacific side and uh, southeast 30, 35 knots, central Aleutians, lighter winds through here, but storm force north and northeast winds west of Adak all the way out to Shimi and Attu at 55 knots. Those storms continue into Saturday with that low, slow moving, low pressure area. We'll call it north 50 knots here from uh, say Amchitka Island on out to Shimia with uh, seas up around 30 feet and then the central Aleutians come down to about 25 to 30 knots out of the northeast and then east southeast uh, 20 to 25 knots for the Fox Islands. Southwest coast uh, by the afternoon or sometime later in the afternoon you'll see some gale force winds out of the east and southeast seas building 9 to 11 feet east 40 knots Perloff Islands 18 foot seas northeast 45 knots St. Matthew Island and gales for St. Lawrence Island in the afternoon out of the north. And then for Saturday, east winds 30 knots, Norton Sound turned northeast, increased to 45 knots coming across St. Lawrence Island into St. Matthew Island, southeast 30 for the Pribilofs, and 40 knots southeast winds south of Nunavak Island with 30 knot easterlies along the Yukon Delta coast. Beaufort Sea Coast, pretty light and variable at 10 knots tomorrow on the east side, central coast southwest 15, west winds 15 knots, uh, on the west side all the way down to Cape Thompson and bumped up 20 knots Cape Thompson to Wales and then the outlook for Saturday east 30 knots here from Wales up to Cape Thompson Cape Thompson Cape Beaufort 15 knots and back up to 20 knots for the western and central coast small craft advisories 25 to 30 knot west winds for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast for tonight again uh, several inches of snow and that's about it uh, here for the eastern interiors this system slowly moves off to the east showers down along the north Gulf Coast Stays uh, damp and cloudy over the Panhandle. Big storm coming into the Bering Sea with uh, gale storm force winds and a really good shot of moisture associated with it that tomorrow slowly edges eastward. So it'll be affecting the southwest coast, definitely the Alaska Peninsula. Fair over the interior, showers in the Panhandle, light snow up over the northwest with that trough and slowly diminishing precipitation here in the east. Sunday, rain, heavy rain and gusty strong winds here around in advance of that frontal boundary. Uh, better conditions to the northeast and dry over the Panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.